What's good? It's your boy Jay Brock. It's Clap It Up LA. Right here with the homie Teron Ward. You know what I'm saying? Hey, how I met him is through a loss in high school in the state championship game. It was Crenshaw versus De La Salle. And bro did his thing at the end of the day. That's all I can say, man. How you doing today, bro? I'm doing blessed, man. I feel blessed. Uh... Happy to be here, for real. Yeah, let them know where we at, man. Just two nights. So we at the Just Two Nights pop-up. We yeah. are in a city close to Pasadena. I don't know what city we are in. Yeah. Uh, this is the Just Two Nights Spring 2022 yeah. release. You know, we got food, we got body work, we got clothes, we yeah. got good people. Good vibes. Good vibes. You know we got a nice sunny day in Southern yeah. California. We can't complain, man. Yeah, that's right. Straight like that now. Let's talk about childhood, okay? He's yeah. obviously a football legend. He took it all the way to the highest level. Um, you come up actually with a football family, so to yeah. speak, because your pop played football yeah. as well. Yeah. He was actually a coach on the team. Now, was that ever something that was used to your advantage with your dad being your coach? Uh, <laughs> I, honestly, bro, all I can remember growing up was my dad being my coach from, you know, youth football days yeah. to high school. So yeah. I really didn't know anything you know other. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. That was like me and my brother. My brother is TJ. Yeah. Uh, a hitter, too. I mean, a banger for real. He had a reputation <laughs> for that, for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's all we knew. So when we got to high school, he joined the South coach staff as well. He, yeah, actually, yeah. he actually coached DBs, though. So yeah. I was with my dad some of the times. The majority, I was strictly offense. So yeah. when I got to high school, I kind of... I guess straight away a little bit, yeah. but he was always on the coaching staff for sure. Ah, got you, got you. Now, what was Pop Warner football like for you? Who was an inspiration? Because you know the great Maurice Jones Drew went to De La Salle, yeah, yeah. and you guys were kind of similarly yeah. built. So who was an inspiration for you in football, and who you wanted to mock your game after? Maurice was definitely at, at the running back position, the person I mocked my game after. Like yeah. you said, similar body type, similar sizes, uh, similar journeys too, you know. Yeah. We both grew up in Antioch. Uh, both went to Del South, both played the next levels. Yeah. Um, it was kind of just a, it was an example of like what could be done mm -hmm. with this kind of body type, you know what I mean? So definitely Reese, I always looked for the running backs, Reese, I always like guys like Garrison Hurst, I like Brian Westbrook. I yeah, like, that's okay. Yeah, yeah okay. so I like those type of guys yeah. growing up, yeah. um, not overly, uh, built or yeah. with stature, yeah. but always brought something to the table. So it was uh, those type of people I looked at growing up. Got you, sure. got you. So with your smaller stature, were you ever told that you couldn't, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't play football, you couldn't be successful in the game? Only a few times from a handful of people. Like okay. I, growing up, I was always kind of the the guy, the guy growing okay, up, you, like on my you. team. So. Yeah. People weren't, weren't really telling me that until I got to college and I was, I'm not, I'm sorry, I got to high school and I was a freshman, 5'3", 130. Yeah, like, what do you wear? It, yeah, might, okay, yeah. it might not be yeah. your, your best route, but I was yeah. still good. I yeah. mean, I was still was balling mm -hmm. um, and I grew as in high school and, you know, continued to produce and produce. So it was only, like I said, a handful of people that I thought maybe I should take a different direction with my life, but majority gotcha. of from my area, I had the full support. Yeah. Now, did that to make did that like make did that change your determination when people begin to doubt you? Did that like make you more determined? Did that make you want to go harder? No, I think I always had self self uh, determination yeah. and confidence. Yeah. I knew what I can do. Do what I can do. Yeah. And you know, not only did I not know that myself, but yeah. I produced. You yeah. know what I mean? So when I had the results. Yeah. That always backed up what I thought about behind myself. It was like I mean? was nothing nobody could really tell you. Exactly. Okay, so, gotcha. And I always, you know, it's funny, like, me and Malcolm, when we started this in college, it was, like, confidence is something that, every, that everyone needs. Facts. And I always, I was telling somebody earlier, like, when you're good at what you do, confidence yeah. just usually comes with it. Facts. So I've always been a confident person. Yeah. So when I got to the high school, my confidence was... It was out the roof. It was out the roof. Yeah. It was... Yeah. Really, no one can really tell me anything. You know what gotcha, I mean? So, gotcha. I always say, like I said, confidence in myself and confidence in my preparation and hard work and what I did yeah. leading up to the season and yeah. the season of just the results. Yeah. Okay, so let's say this. De La Salle was not your average high school, okay? It is one of the top tier programs. And I mean, year after year has been one of the number one football programs around. So mm -hmm. speak to me, speak to the people about what the what what, what type of culture De La Salle, what, what, what is going on up there for them to win so much? And, and, and what, why do the kids buy in so well? Yeah, uh, it's definitely a, it's a, pro, it's a program yeah. for starters, man. It, it has 
It has its, its, its pillars of what they want your players to be like on and off the field in the community and on the on the field. Um, and the school itself is a hard school. You got to apply to get in. So yeah. it's a hard school to get in. The academic side of it is hard. Um, did you get on a scholarship or did you apply to get in? I have financial aid for sure. Okay. For sure. It's okay. a pretty expensive school. Okay, gotcha. um, uh, but as far as the football program is, can you be reliable? Can you commit to what we're doing? Because it's going to take a lot of your time. You're not going to be able to do the normal things high school students do because your time is going to be occupied with meetings, training, uh, team events, bonding events, but it also brings your team together close. Like, I think we were talking earlier off camera that uh, that Crenshaw team you were on was much more talented than the team we had, right? And what you told me that we were, you know, sound, we were disciplined, and that's what later pushed us to win the game. Uh, we have some athletes, don't get me wrong, we just not you know, playing with no definitely, talent, definitely, but, definitely, definitely. you know, definitely. what always put us, uh, Ahead, a shoulder ahead above other teams was, you know, that discipline and that uh, camaraderie and that brotherhood and, uh, you know, that uh, uh, reliability, to, uh, accountability and reliability to your teammates. That's you know what right. I mean? That's right. So that was kind of the things that pushed De La Salle and having a standard of this is how we're going to do it, this is how we're going to get it done. You know what I mean? So when I got there, the standard was already built for 15, 20, 20 plus years. You know what I mean? Yes. So yeah. it's pretty much. You fall in line. Yeah, like, yeah. no one is bigger than a team, no one bigger than the program. So, if you want to do your own thing, yeah. you know, there's the door. That's pretty right. much. <laughs> straight up, straight like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You fall in line. Right. And then, especially you brought up having to pay that money to even go there. That's no games all on its own. So, let's give them a little bit of a, of a recap of that Crenshaw De La Salle game. Um, I'm sitting behind the camera. I went to Crenshaw. You know what I'm saying? He went to De La Salle. Coming into that game, we knew exactly what you said. This is going to be a fundamental team. What were some of the things that you guys were made aware of before we stepped out on the field that day? And I'm going to give you a little bit more of a reason why I felt like we actually lost. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you. Uh, so, watch the film. I, I can remember watch the film of y'all. Like, the first thing first was the speed was out the roof, man. Y'all had, you know, guys like DeAnthony. You had Greg Decree. Yeah. You had uh, Big Marcus. Pilar, you had Hayes yeah. Pilar. Yeah. You had uh, Marcus, yeah. Yeah, 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 just had a team full of this ballers. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, and that's what we show uh, on the film. Like I was telling you earlier, we watched the game when y'all played at SC. Yeah. And it was a muddy, rainy game. I forget who y'all was playing. Played but, against Norbon. Yes. Okay, Norbon. Yeah. And y'all was moving. Yeah. Moving in a yeah. muddy, rainy game. And, you know, the Coliseum. And y'all was just balling. And I think about the other running back y'all had, 33. and forget his name. Norwood. Jeffrey yeah, Norwood. He was running through shit. Yeah. The whole game, like, he yeah. was breaking at least two, three tackles every play. Mm -hmm. Or every, every run, he got, every time he got the ball. Mm -hmm. So we knew, like, we were dealing with a team that was uh, highly, highly athletic, fast, built, and it was just a good team. Y'all pretty much ran through it. We looked at the scores. Y'all really ran through everybody the whole season. Facts, yeah. So, and I think that was your first time that Crenshaw had been, uh, or any kind of city school in L.A. had, had been, been to the state. state. Yeah. So we were used to playing, you know, kind of teams that were, like Corona we had played twice before that. Yeah. Somebody else we had played. Um... And uh, those were teams that were more like our program. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, come from a kind of rich tradition, kind of had that uh, foundation set. And y'all kind of were like a new school on the block with just hell athleticism, a talented, talented team, well-coached team too. Right. Don't get me wrong. Um, and it all showed on the fan fire. Yeah. yeah, now being a story program, I'm going to say, one thing I feel like y'all had an advantage over us is because y'all were experienced mm -hmm. and we were tired. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, mentally, a lot of our team was tired. During the city game, when they made the announcement that we was going to the state, people was like, oh my God, here we go again. Mm -hmm. But we used to practice from three to seven. So <laughs> we used to be whooped, bro. So for them to say we had an extra game, a lot of our team was tired. And I feel like y'all took advantage of just being there and knowing that it was okay and it's gonna be a long season. Yeah, and they, they cut you, I'm sorry to cut you no, off. Like, like you said that the experience, like when we got our schedule or our getting ready for the year, like we knew our game, our season to enter December twentieth. Like we knew, Y'all like knew it, yeah. we are we we not finishing at Thanksgiving. We are yeah. not finishing the first <laughs> week of December. Like yeah. we was, you know, what I mean, prepared to play that last game of the year. Right. And now, like like I said, the foundation was already set. Yeah. This is how we go. This is what we gonna do. This is how we gonna do it. So right. it's funny you say that. Like experience, but like we had already been to the 
I think my uh, senior year. So we had already been to the state game four years prior to that in a row. Oh my gosh, four yeah, years yeah. in a row. Talk yeah. about that experience. Now, was it a big thing to win a state championship game? Oh, no, no doubt, about, no doubt about it. Okay, so no uh, doubt about please it. tell look, us. So for my freshman year yeah. was the first year that uh, that whole state game had came together. At first right. it was just yeah. like, you the best in the state, yeah. right? Yeah. So that first year was uh, the first year that was created. We had a good team. Uh, but ended up losing in the state. Mm -hmm. Our sophomore year, we came back and played Corona Centennial. They had a loaded team, beat them. Yeah. My junior year, we came back, played Corona Centennial again, came down to the last kickoff, and we lost. Mm. So right now, we uh, we won in two in state. Yeah. So it comes to like, and with us, it was always one of the things we said at Dayla, I was like, you only remember that. How do you want to be remembered? Mm. And you remember by your last game. That's right. You know what I mean? So. If you lost your last game, pretty, people are like, I don't really care what you did the whole season, yeah, but facts. you're not state champion. Facts. You didn't win yeah. your last game. So, like, yeah. to say it wasn't important, man, it was highly, like, yeah. highly, this is what you had to do to be remembered as a quality team facts. in the history of De La Salle. Yeah. So, we took it We took it real serious, bro. Yeah. And down 14-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down 14 Yeah, I jumped on this quick. And, and bang, to go bang, on bang. to score 28 unanswered points, right? What was the mood like on the sidelines when y'all down 14 nothing? And then explain to us how things changed when y'all went all the way up by 28. So, like I said to you earlier, y'all jumped on us quick. Yeah, it was 14-0, I think, in the first quarter. Like, yeah. the first, yeah. I want to say, five, six minutes of the quarter. Like, and I want to get his spill on this. I want to because we're going to have more Crenshaw players <laughs> who get their spill. I got to get uh, your spill. So, so y'all was uh, y'all went up quick. And I think our team was shell shocked to be down that two tugs mm -hmm. that quick. Yeah. Uh, but we knew it was a long game. Yeah. You know what I mean, and usually how we like to play, we like to wear and tear and grind on teams. And that's exactly until, what y'all did. Until we get to the fourth quarter, <laughs> yeah. we gotta break away. Yeah. Because we were a well conditioned team. Yeah. Um, and I think it was the second quarter. It was 17, it was 14 to 7. Yeah. And uh, my boy Ty had broke away for like a 40, 50 yard. He put the yarder for the for the end zone, and DeAnthony went to chase him down. And when he would chase him down, he rolled his ankle. Yeah. Uh, and he really never played. It played a little bit, I guess, like as a. Uh, uh, DeAnthony was out after that. No, no, but he he played a little bit as like a. Um, what do you call it? Like a distraction. Like yeah, a, yeah, I forgot. I know what you're talking. About. Yeah, he about. came in like stuff left like that, but he didn't really play like he was playing. Yeah. Um, and so it was tied 14-14, mm -hmm. and you know that big threat that one hit home run was kind of gone. Yeah. So we really could focus on like the other running back, I forget his name, I keep forgetting his name. Jeffrey Norwood. Jeffrey Norwood, we could yeah. focus on him, you know, gang tackle him and then yeah. really shut the passing, day, passing yeah. game down. Yeah. So it became the game plan, I think for y'all shrunk, not having DeAnthony out there. Yeah. And we, like I said, we took advantage of, you know, having a well-conditioned team and like I said, hit after hit, rare and tear after quarter. I think that kind of just broke away. And I can, tell you that, I can tell you that weight room definitely played a part in that. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, man. I tell y'all, one of the funniest things I heard, I heard a guy, one of y'all players say he was scared because he had, he was scared to play us because he had watched uh, Boys in the Hood. So I guess they <laughs> had, I guess some people had that kind of cons my misconception about yeah, yeah, who yeah. we were. You know what I'm saying? So that's crazy. So, all right. Now, after high school, you were going to Oregon State. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Beavers. Do your thing up in Oregon State. Yeah, yeah. Speak on a little bit of what that experience was like and, and some of the memories that you'll never forget up there. Uh, just going to college, man. Like yeah. getting away from home, yeah. being on your own for the first time, playing ball in front of you know 45, 50 thousand people. Yeah. You know, traveling to Pac-12 and playing the away games, playing in the Coliseum, playing at the Rose Bowl, playing at Austin Stadium. You know, going to Utah and a rowdy place like that, like it was a, it was an experience, man. And like, yeah. I got to meet people and play with some of the greatest people in the university of history. Right. Um, it's also a challenge, man. I'm not a lot, not a lot of people know this, but I almost transferred out of Oregon State. Really? Uh, my sophomore year. Yeah, they, cause I was buried on, I was buried on the depth chart going into my sophomore year, and I just felt like I was a better player than what I was doing. Assess that. Um, um, so how did you overcome that? Speak on that process because there's a lot of people who think it's just it's easy. Oh I'm yeah. I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna just ball and do my thing. Yeah. But they don't know about having to overcome an obstacle. Yeah, so yeah. So speak on how you overcame that obstacle. Dude, I was mistake. one foot out the door of leaving and going back to. I was gonna go to the city college of San Francisco. Okay. I had already had like my classes set up there. 
I right. had already had an apartment set up in the city, so I was really one foot out. And I really sat back. I talked to my parents, talked to my brother, yeah. and you know, I weighed on it heavy. And I was like, Do I really want to start over? Yeah. Or do I want to just you know grind it out here, thug it out here, and see if I can make anything of myself? And I went with my gut. I said, You know, I'm gonna stay here. Like I already met, met my friends here. Like I had a good uh, core of friends that I, I, I chilled with and hung out with, and. Uh, just decided to stay and everything kind of worked its way out, you know. Um, started playing a lot more, got a lot more playing town, started producing a lot more and, you know, game after game, practice after practice, uh, things just started to fall in place. Mm -hmm. But it definitely was a time in a, uh, where I was unsure of my future as a B, for sure. Well, that's that, that's a beautiful thing that you decided to share there, because like I said, this is so this is another Division One running back or whatever he yeah. is who was feeling the same way. No doubt. But if, if 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 my boy Teron Ward can get over it, you can get over it too. And luckily back then for us, like we didn't have a transfer portal. Yeah. Oh, man. So like, that's you know, why a lot of people today are like yeah. they're not getting how they. They're not getting the experience they thought they were going to have, and they yeah. out. Wicked. You, you see people going to yeah. two, three different colleges like yeah. it's nothing. Do you think that's good or bad? I think it's good, actually, okay. because oh, it's good and bad. Okay. I think it's bad because people don't know how to thug it out and mm -hmm. get their situation. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's good because a coach can leave and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Go get more pay, go do a better job. Why can't a player? Yeah, true. So I never so thought I think, about it like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's like it's, it's, it's two sides of the coin. Yeah. And I that's think right. I think it's good and bad for everything. That's right. That's right. Okay, so did you end up staying your whole four years? Yeah, I did. Stay, okay, I stayed so you, four. You stayed your whole four years, and I would see you on ESPN, you know, and I would see, I would see, I'm, I'm looking at him like, dang, we played against him in high school. He balling doing his thing. Of course, your big brother. Y'all both would end up making it to the NFL. Mm -hmm. So speak on, because you guys understand that, okay, well, I'm going to go in this round. I'm going to go in this round. So speak on the preparation and getting ready to exit college and go to the NFL. What was that like? So for me, I tore my meniscus my last game okay. uh, as a beaver. So like my okay. process was a little different. No, I, a okay. I had to wait till uh, my knee healed up to continue my training. Going back home, training, train, I trained that cow strength. They got me right. Uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get uh, invited to the combine, but I had a hell of a pro day. Was that was that kind of discouraging? Not getting invited to the combine? Uh, yes and no. I'm always someone that looks. Something that it is what it is. Like yeah, yeah, okay. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna dawn on them. Be like, oh, why they didn't invite me? Why they, it's just, it is what it is. So I had a good pro day. Mm -hmm. I ended up, going, I went undrafted to the Falcons, and that kind of built my hunger. Like, like I know that motherfuckers out here, you know, what I mean, better than me. Right. That mean people better than me. But like I said, it is what it is. I took it as an opportunity to showcase myself uh, in training camp, and like I said, everything always. Works out how it's supposed to. Got you, got you. Okay, so you killed the pro day. What was the numbers like at the pro day, man? Uh, I ran 4-4 four, four in the 40. Uh, and that's really only the number I really remember. I, I benched. I had 20 reps on the bench. With well, a 40, all that matters for Yeah, I, <laughs> hey, that's, what, that's only one I really <laughs> sticks. I know I, yeah. I know I had 20 on the bench. Yeah. I ran 4-4 four, four in the 40. Uh, I don't remember what my three cone and stuff like that was. Yeah. Had a, I didn't drop a ball in my routes. Had a good running back specialist uh, segment, so like, I had a, I had a good show. I had what, a good one. Was there any nerves? Was it oh, any a whole bunch of nerves. Okay. I think we had when I came out. Yeah, you, know, you know, we had Sean, and Sean was uh, projected to go first three rounds. So like, yeah. we had thirty two teams there. Yeah. So it was packed, and then uh, so it's a lot of it's a job interview, but it's a job yeah, interview facts, for one facts. of the biggest corporations in the world. And, and all you can do is hope everything and goes everything, right. Yeah. <laughs> This is when you're dealing with sports, you know what yeah. I mean? You don't know if you're going to trip up or yeah. oh, make a man. mockery of yourself. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's nerves for sure. Yeah. But that's just sports. Yeah. It's nerves before the first kickoff. Right. Oh, you know facts, what I mean? But facts. once you get going, it's you're rap. good. Right. So, Atlanta Falcons picks you up. What round, what round did you go? I went undrafted. Okay, you went undrafted. They picked me, okay. pick me up in the free agency. Okay, so speak on that because, you know, you want to hear your name called on the big screen, you want to get that call during the draft. So when you go undrafted, how are you feeling about that? I was actually in Vegas, bro, because I kind of knew I was going to be later rounds, and yeah. I was like, I'm not trying to sit around the house and wait for somebody to call me all day, right. sitting by the phone. So I said, you know, I'm going to go to Vegas. Yeah. I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. And I was actually at a pool party oh my uh, God. during the draft. <laughs> yeah. When the time came when I thought I would get called, you know, I went back to the hotel and chilled out for a little bit, me and my cousins and my brother. Yeah. And my name didn't get called yeah. uh, 
you know, I got a call from uh, Tennessee. I got a call from Atlanta. I got a call from Oakland. I got a call from like five different teams yeah. asking me to invite me to sign me as a free agent. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought Atlanta was the best fit. They had a new coach coming in, DQ, Dan Quinn. You went to the Super Bowl? I did, I did, oh, I did. You played against the Patriots? I did, Oh, yeah. man, talk yeah. about being now yeah. 28 to 3. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, uh... I went with the Falcons. Then um, our second year went to the Super Bowl. Thought we were gonna get a ring. They came back on us. Oh, and the rest is history. Oh, man. So speak on being in the NFL. What you, what you play like four years? Hey, you got your full four years in the NFL. What are some of the experiences and, and what are some of the things? You know, that's the highest level of the game. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how was that experience for you? It's an experience for sure. Yeah. It's not what you experience in college. Yeah. It's not what you experience in high school. Yeah. It's very much more business. Like, no, it is business. Now I always say like. Uh, it's definitely business like. <laughs> um, it's a lot more corporate to it, but it's yeah. a good time, man. You get paid a lot of money to play a kids' game. Yeah. Um, and it's an experience, yeah. for sure. Like, you know, you're not gonna play forever, so it is a time period in your life. So you gotta take it as that. Um, it's not a really a, a career. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's the understanding you get when you get there. Huh? Yeah, and that's what you understand when you get there. Like, this is short lived. The NFL is not for long, man. And uh, that's what just something you learn. You get, but it's a hell of an experience, man. You, you get to play with some of the best guys in the world. Um, you get treated like royalty wherever you go. Um, like I said, you get you get paid to play a kids' game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last but not least, there's a lot of chatter going on here. We're gonna wrap it up. What do you clap it up for when you think about everything you've been through and where you stand today? Uh, just staying true to me, yeah. the perseverance, yeah. um, the accomplishments along the way, and the accomplishments that are coming. Man, life is not done because that segment of your life is done. It's, Bunch of more goals to uh, achieve, and uh, I look forward to doing all those. That's right. Straight like that. Make sure you tell my boy Teron Ward, that's too nice. You know what I'm saying? We 